In today's video, we'll be going over principle of moments, also known as Varagon's theorem. Varagon's theorem states that the moment of a force about a point is equal to the sum of the moments of the force's components about that point. Therefore, the resultant moment about each axis can be expressed as a summation of the moments of the force's components about that point. The magnitude of a moment vector at a certain point can be found using this equation where it is equal to the square root of the sum of moments of the force's components in the x direction squared plus the sum of moments of the force components in the y direction squared plus the sum of moments in the z direction squared. The angles describing the vector moment about the origin can be found using these formulas. These angle formulas will be used later in the slides. In summary, from the diagram, we can see that the moment vector about the origin is perpendicular to the plane that contains the position vector and the force vector. From calculus, we know that the resultant of the cross product, r cross f, creates a perpendicular moment vector arm. Now that we have our moment vector, we can put it into Cartesian form. The values before the i, j, k are our scalar components, which is represented by the x, y, and z moment force components. Now, to find the magnitude of the moment vector about the origin, we can take the scalar components from the Cartesian form. Then we can square the x, y, and z force components and add them together and square root the whole thing to give us the magnitude of the moment. To find the angles from the previous slide, we can use these equations that defines the moment vector about the origin. Angle alpha is measured from the x-axis to the moment vector about the origin, and the equation to find alpha is equal to cos inverse of the x force component from the Cartesian equation, which is also this value, divided by the magnitude of the moment about the origin, which would be this value. Beta is the same equation as alpha, but instead of being measured from the x-axis, it is measured from the y-axis, and, and uses this y force component here. Same goes for gamma, where it is measured from the z-axis and uses the z force component here. That concludes everything you need to know in 3D force systems. In the next video, we'll be going over an example related to 3D force systems.